Hi, Paul. Thank you so much for taking the time to meet with me. Uh, it's a real honor and a privilege. So you have many years experience in IP in the US. How is the current COVID-19 situation impacting the sector in general? And which are the major changes you've seen in the last few months? Well, the, the coronavirus pandemic has introduced uh, what can only be seen as significant uncertainty to an already complex IP system. Uh, starting in around February, 2020, IP offices around the world, uh, law firms, companies, other stakeholders, took what I saw as quick and noticeable action to protect their employees and themselves and their families uh, by closing physical facilities and encouraging remote work. Uh, uh, an option, by the way, that I think uh, is thankfully available to us in this industry. It's not available everywhere. But the long-term effects of these closures and the social guidelines that come with them, like social distancing, or reduced travel, I really think the effects of those, uh, of those uh, things are yet to be seen. But, but in the meantime, there are three areas that uh, I think we see a, a major changes in. The first is in the reliance on electronic filing and communication. This situation has required uh, e-filing, uh, electronic communication uh, between patent offices, uh, between uh, uh, agents and, 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 their, and their clients, but it's also provided a bit of a stress test I think, on the IT systems and electronic filing systems. Uh, when filing electronically is your only option because you're home or because you're working remotely, you quickly discover how well they really work and how much you need them. So I think that's been a major change. In most instances, uh, for instance, in the USPTO or International Bureau of WIPO or the European Patent Offices, um, they didn't completely close. So their e-filing systems are still active. And so the deadlines associated with them are still active. And uh, even though they didn't close, and in some cases they've extended the deadlines, we really thought that it's best to respond to the uh, normal deadline electronically um, without uh, taking any further extensions if possible, just as a matter of best practice. You know, it's appreciated that they offer this sort of filing kindness to us, but we'd rather not take it. We'd rather just be within the normal, uh, normal response deadline. So Paul, you are a seasoned foreign filing specialist at Baker Donaldson, Berman, Caldwell, and Berkowitz PC. Uh, besides for the re remote work, how is this current situation impacting your job in particular? Well, um, among uh, my duties, my job's always included communication with clients and international associates. Um, the vendors who are providing services to start and complete uh, the filing of new applications, prosecute them. So the current situation has probably affected and impacted uh, communication more than anything else. Uh, I always think that keeping your clients informed and making sure that your international associates and vendors have what they need are really important parts uh, of my job. And doing those things pre-coronavirus presented a challenge. It was always difficult, always a bit of a juggling act to do that. But now I, I think, and, and I think many foreign filing specialists would agree with this, rapid communication uh, and uh, constant communication with your clients and associates while working remotely, it's something we have to do. Uh, we have to keep on top of it. So uh, as a result, I, set, I spend uh, a good a portion of my day, a substantial part of my day, responding to international associates, informing clients, keeping them updated on their applications. Supporting many uh, attorneys at, at your firm on the East Coast in the US, you, uh, you, you mostly deal with the life sciences and biotechnology. Many of them are, are filing in many different countries all around the world. Have you seen during any PCP filings during national phase, have you seen any cutbacks on countries that they would be filing on uh, prior to COVID-19 that they won't 
be because of the situation? Well, uh, I haven't seen many uh, much in the way of cutbacks because of the uh, fears of the virus. Um, there may be cutbacks because of economic reasons. Um, so uh, like I mentioned, many of the patent offices have remained open or they've extended their deadline. So you can still file applications there, especially new ones, um, if necessary. Uh, what may be holding some back from filing is um, an uncertain economic future. You know, uh, do we want to really invest you know, thousands of dollars in an uh, application in a place where we're not sure if we should file there? So uh, that has an impact on uh, business decisions, I'm sure, on um, decisions as to you know, whether to, to have large outlays of money for things like translation, for instance. Um, that's that's uh, decisions to be made by executives, and, and I don't envy them <laughs> on that. Um, but uh, given the sort of global nature of, uh, of the pandemic, it's going to have an impact uh, in, in every sector, I believe. So uh, are you saying that you've seen cutbacks and many companies and many clients that, you're, that you support are now not filing in certain countries because of financial reasons? Well, in taking a look at, uh, in, in some cases, where we used to file, um, sort of the history of, of filing in, for some of our clients, um, it seems that they're taking that into consideration. Um, now, it doesn't mean that they go from filing in 10 countries to one, but uh, perhaps from 10 to, to nine or 10 to eight. Um, and, you know, trying to, dis, trying to uh, sort of disentangle whether or not that's an economic decision or you know some sort of uh, internal business decision, but it just it seems uh, uh, logical that um, the current situation is going to affect their their decisions as to where to go. So where we filed uh, in the past, you know, has in some cases, not all, um, has been reduced a, a bit. Um, that that is something we're we're beginning to see a little bit. So considering your solid experience in forum filing, do you see the current situation having an impact on international collaboration? You know, uh, I must say that's an area that I really don't see being impacted a great deal by this situation. You know, inventors around the world still work together. Uh, universities still collaborate with companies and other universities and other entities. Um, governments, including the U.S. government, um, through agencies like the NIH and the uh, HHS, they still collaborate with uh, other companies and, and universities. You know, if anything, uh, and perhaps this is more of a hopeful note for me, uh, I would really presume that the current crisis would foster more international cooperation and collaboration, uh, if only to identify treatments for the vaccine for or treatments and, and a vaccine for for coronavirus um, this kind of cooperation that i'm talking about really isn't unheard of you know especially in the face of crisis you know, it could be seen in the 80s and 90s i think at the height of the hiv crisis um, there was international cooperation that, uh, even at that time and, and even later um, as as treatments were found um, but situations like these one where there's a common goal or you know if you want to use that the phrase like sort of a common enemy common foe um, i think situations like these have a capacity for uniting efforts and for sort of marshalling the, the best the expertise of the qualified I hope I'm not being Pollyannish about that. And I, I hope I'm just not being hopeful about that. You know, I'm being clear-eyed about it, but I, I really believe that that's uh, the direction we're headed. Paul, in 30 seconds or less, would you be able to share with us and many foreign uh, associates around the world that are relying on innovation 
what would you say to them regarding what you expect from the IP uh, side moving forward after this crisis? Well, uh, I think we're going to have a little bit of a lag between sort of uh, recognition and realization. You know, we recognize that the current crisis is going to uh, have an impact on uh, innovation. It's going to have an impact on the resources people get to uh, you know, pursue patent applications. Um, but sort of the, the real pain to be felt by it might, be, might come later. But I, I really do believe that after some time, and I, I wish I could give a, a actual you know, deadline here, six months, a year, however long it takes, IP will come back strong. Um, and uh, it, it will, it will uh, continue to foster international cooperation. And I, I really do believe IP uh, will, you know, once again, as it has in the past, uh, take a lead role in um, you know, wiping out things like uh, uh, like coronavirus, um, as it has in the past.